Good afternoon, my name is Joel and I am with Woodcraft Spokane. Uh, if you're tuning in today, uh, either through our Facebook channel or our YouTube channel, Woodcraft of Spokane, welcome. Normally they have me behind the camera uh, running all of our demos, demos here that we do for, uh, for you folks to watch. Uh, but this time they've got me in front of the camera. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, with all of this, why aren't you in front of the camera more often? Well, the short answer is uh, I'm the only one that can film. So that's why I, uh, I'm uh, always being told uh, to zoom in or whatnot. Um, I'm that guy. So today we're going to be talking about the Polyag Pin Turners Blank. Um, this is fantastic. It's very reminiscent of the True Stone that we used to sell here. Uh, it's the same. It is 85% pulverized stone mixed in with 15% uh, resin or acrylic. Um, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It comes in many different colors, styles, uh, conglomerates, all of that wonderful stuff. Um, what you want to do is make sure that you use very sharp tools, whether you use a traditional tool, which is great and designed to turn this, make sure that it's uh, very sharp. If you are using um, a carbide tipped tool, uh, make sure that that is also sharp. Uh, today we're going to be using uh, the Easy Wood tools and I'm going to be using for the first time their negative rake. Their negative rake is designed for very hard woods and acrylics. So, you know, this kind of is in that genre, so we're going to go ahead and see how that works. Uh, today I'm going to be turning a pen blank. This one is called White Coral. I've already have it uh, drilled. I've got the, the brass already glued into it and the bushings on the end. Here's a little tip. When you drill out these poly egg blanks, you're going to get uh, some remnants that come out all over your bandsaw, just like this. We can zoom in on this later. Um, you're also going to get this when you're turning the blank. I suggest you make sure everything is clean before you start. I suggest you take this, put it in a baggie, and label it, uh, all of the remnants. Why? Because it's great if you have a wood blank that has a crack in it, uh, let's say you got overzealous and you were turning and the wood had a crack you didn't know and it fell off or blew off. Uh, this is a great opportunity to take that stone, whatever color it is, and to fill in that crack and that section with uh, a thin CA glue and get it in there. I love using copper, for example. I love using this material uh, to fill in um, those cracks or blowouts or whatever you want to. Even if you've got like a large piece um, and let's say you're making a hollow form and it's got a crack down it, this is phenomenal to fill in that crack and really create uh, an accent piece or bling, if you will, that uh, will, will, will really up your project. So some of the products we're going to use today is not only the actual blank, the, the poly ag blank. But I'm also going to be using uh, to sand with the Abernet. I already talked about the negative rake tools and we're going to be hitting it with some micro mesh. So Abernet is one of my favorite um, sandpapers and which we will get to later and actually use. Abernet is more of a fabric. It has a hook and loop on the back and it tells you the grit. And uh, one of the nice things about this is I think they last longer, first of all. And second of all, if they get muckied up or dirty or whatnot, instead of throwing them away, I wash them. Uh, just in the sink with light water, get, them, get all of that out of the, uh, the pores in the sandpaper, and then lay them on a cotton towel or whatnot and just let them dry, dry naturally, and I'm good to go again. Fantastic product, and I use it for everything that I do. So let's see. One of the things that we're going to want to do is, because safety first, um, I'm going to go ahead and grab my face shield. 
And the reason why we do the face shield with this instead of just goggles, which you can, but you may find what I have found out over the years of turning products like this is um, as you start off and you're rounding the corners, you get, well, let's just be honest. This is a stone. Although it's pulverized and put back together with acrylic, it still feels like gravel shooting all over your face. So I go ahead and use a face shield, uh, also something that we sell here at Woodcraft, either online or in our store. And it really protects the whole area so that, yeah, your eyes are protected, but you've got these like gravel pieces that are sticking in your skin. Not to that extreme, of course, but it is... Uh, it is good to have that. So I'm going to grab that while we go ahead and zoom in on this, and then we'll get to turning. So let's go ahead and come on in. Perfect. Let's get a good shot of that, and let's get to turning. I've got my face shield, and let's see how this negative rake works on our project. And as always, thanks for tuning in for our live demos on these on our Facebook page. So we're starting off with a negative rake. Let's drop that down a little bit. With easy wood tools, you want it right in the center. So far, I'm very impressed with the negative rake easy wood cutters. All right, so let's go ahead and try the other one, the rougher. here is we want to get close to the bushings but not actually cutting into the bushings. We're going to go ahead and sand that with our Abernet. We're going to sand that with the Abernet by feathering it from the bushing inward. Feels pretty good. A little bit more on this side. Now one of the things about this, uh, as opposed to let's say wood or acrylic, is you want to go very slow with this. This is stone, this will chip out if you try to hurry it and your tool isn't sharp enough. And what we'll go ahead, and if that happens, then at the end of this I'll go ahead and show you some some cool ideas all right so let's take a look i'll get out of the way so you can see that oh it's looking beautiful all right so now we're going to do some sanding i'm going to use our abernet abernet uh, i use a package of it it's right here it's got uh, an assortment from basically uh, nine different grits from 80 up to 600. But in this particular project, I am going to start off with 220 because that's where I need to. And we're going to go ahead and feather it on. We're just going to feather from the outside in.
I really like this. And it, it does, if you've ever worked with um, a product called True Stone, we used to sell that. This acts very much like that. Doesn't take much. I just kind of run my thumb over there just to feel, feather it in. You can see it. All right, I'm almost happy with that. Do you notice the Abernets clogging up? Watch this. And pretty much unclogged. And the other nice thing about this is, if I didn't already mention it, um, if it gets clogged up like this, you can literally wash them and then just let them, let them uh, line dry. That is 220. We're now going to 320. One of the things you'll notice, um, and it depends on the bushings that you have for your project, your blank will start to get dirty. That's nothing to worry about. That is actually coming from the bushings. Uh, a lot of the bushings come in with a, a coating, a, a dark coating on them and that'll come off with your, uh, your micro mesh. All right, two more grits with this one, folks. We're gonna hit 400 now. Doesn't take very long. Now we're gonna hit 600, and then we're gonna get into our micro mesh. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off and stand back so you can see. Do you see how it's got a little bit of muddiness to it? That's okay. We're going to get rid of that real, real, real quick. So what I'm going to use now is micro mesh. There's two kinds of micro mesh that I use in my shop. There is the kind that is colorized. It is uh, a grit on each side uh, sandwiched in between some foam that gives it the ability to, to work with it and bend it and whatnot. They also make another type of micro mesh that's more of like the sandpaper like you saw me just use. Um, same grits goes uh, from, from 1,500 to 12,000. Um, the only difference is you can use both of them. Uh, if you're dry, using the dry version of that, then you want to make sure you hit some of the Hutz polish at the end and that will clean up all, all the debris. But for this particular um, demo, we're gonna go ahead and use the wet version of it. Make sure that you place some kind of towel down on your bed that will keep it from splattering with water and rusting. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it back on. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. Then we're gonna start cleaning this up. You can see that coming off right there. That's exactly what you want. Uh, somebody asked me why water. Um, water actually, with this particular product here, with these micro mesh, actually adds as a lubricant. All right, so we're down to that one. That one was 1,500. No, I, 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 I apologize. The green one is 1800. I skipped the 1500. I'm going to go to the black now, which is 2400. This product is very forgiving. So if you skip one of the grits of the sandpaper, it's not that bad. I have not had a problem. And especially if you hit it at the end with some of the huts polish, uh, plastic polish, you are good. All right. Next color, we are at tan. Tan is, drum roll, 3200. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I've been using a variation of this type of product for years, whether it's wine stoppers or 
it's um, pin blinks. And uh, I, I'm just amazed how beautiful this stuff is. <clears throat> We're at wine brown right now. This is 3,600 we're hitting this with right now. And next will be teal. You're going to notice how beautiful this is slowly starting to turn. You're going to start to see a bit of a sheen in there. It's actually coming from the lights. Moving on to teal. I always like uh, looking down at my projects and seeing um, them start off rough and as the uh, overhead light catches it uh, throughout these micro meshes it just gets crisper and crisper and I know I'm getting close. All right, that looks good. We're going to go to purple next. Looking good, looking good. Purple is 6,000, if I didn't mention that already. All right, next, royal blue at 8,000. 8,000 grit. And I don't put too much pressure on here. I let the pad and the water uh, creating a lubrication do its own thing. There's no need. And our last one, folks, is gray. We're at 12,000. Where are you? There you are. And we're getting close. Much better. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. All right, let's go ahead and turn that off. Give that a little bit of a rub. Look at that. Look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. All right, and just for fun, let's go ahead and hit it with some plastic polish. Just a little bit goes a long way. Just turn it on, turn it on slow, about about a thousand RPMs. Just do circles. If there's any micro scratches in there that I didn't catch with the micro mesh, this will take care of it. All right. Then what I like to do, because I like the show, I turn it up on high. And as that polish dries, I come in and wipe it clean. And it looks gorgeous. That is exactly what we're looking for. That is going to be a showstopper for any of the pins that you might be wanting to do. Let me show you a few other items that I've done with this. Earlier today, um, I did this one. It's a little bit longer blank. This one is going to be going into a fountain pen one that we sell here at Woodcraft. And I wanted to show you guys this too. Now this is another color that we have. This is the purple, black, and white. Doesn't look that impressive right now because it's not polished up, but I went ahead and turned it in my own shop and this is what we have. I hope you can see that. I hope that's turning out really well on, on the screen. Now, I was not using the Easy Wood Tool Negative Rake. We talked about that earlier. This is an experiment. I've never used it before. I have to say, I'm very impressed. It turned beautifully. There wasn't any issues. Um, I turned this blank without using a negative rake, and I think probably my head was dull, which happens. So I did get one of those blowouts. Remember when I talked about saving some of your material like this here, when you drill or when you're turning, save this, put it in a baggie, and then say what it is on the baggie in Sharpie. Uh, this one is the uh, white and coral. This can fill in gaps, but what I like to do with my stuff is um, I have in my shop, which we can also buy here in Inlace, and uh, I fill it with copper, and sometimes I will line the outer edge of that crack or blowout with copper using a thin CA glue, and then I will fill the center of that with another color. Um, it doesn't have to be a metal. It can be um, some of this uh, poly ag that we just turned in the middle. 
Um, in this case, I had a friend of mine give me some blue steel in, out of his machine shop uh, debris uh, from drilling or cutting, and I used that. So it's got a little bit of blue steel in there, and then it has uh, some copper. So, yeah, um, the sky's the limit, guys. You can do anything with this. Uh, I use other kinds of stone, uh, turquoise. You know, if I'm doing a hollow form and I have a large vessel, a hollow form that I'm doing, and a crack shows up, um, I fill it. I fill it with some, some beautiful uh, turquoise stone or a polyag remnants that we have here today. So, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do, but this is how easy it is. And the polishing is easy. Whether you're using uh, uh, the dry micro mesh and then hitting at the end with the plastic polish or you're using the wet micro mesh. Any of that will work just fine for you. Thank you so much for coming in today. I've appreciated, I, I, I appreciate you. We appreciate you, uh, whether it's from Woodcraft uh, or Woodcraft Spokane. Uh, we really enjoy doing these demos. I enjoy doing them when they uh, allow me to come around um, and actually be in front of the camera instead of doing the camera uh, as a cameraman and editing. So uh, thank you for coming today. And I hope you enjoyed my demo on turning polyag pen blanks. Thank you.